Hi everybody, welcome to Julia in the Garden. I'm Julia, I garden in Vermont in the northeastern United States. Where I am in Vermont, I'm in zone five. We are on almost 10 acres here in the middle of a hay field. There's actually a dairy farmer who comes in hays along the edges of our property. Um, for his dairy cows. I grow food for my family. I'm working on being more sustainable. I uh, grow herbs, I grow, and I just love to grow pretty plants <laughs> as well. So um, I have a rose circle that's within my berry garden, but I am also a homeschooling mom of four, and so I do what I can in the garden. Uh, in this season of life, I don't have as much time to devote as I would like, but I do, I do spend a lot of time out here. So that's just to give you some context. Today I am doing an April garden tour. Uh, I'm actually gonna do a full property tour today. Going forward, I'll probably split up and do tours of different sections of say the orchard and the berry garden and the potager. I want to give you kind of an overview today. It is uh, April. I'll have the exact date here because I can't remember. Mid late April here in Vermont. We've had some really weird weather over the past few weeks. It has been up into the 80s and down into the 20s and it has been crazy. Um, I think we're finally kind of evening out. Um, we're going into like 60s, <laughs> 50s and 60s mostly during the day. Um, so that'll be, although tomorrow is going to be in the 70s. So that'll actually feel really nice. This is very much an early in progress garden. I keep debating trying to get more projects done before I show you but if I I just I'll just never show you if that happens and that's not the goal so this is kind of a beginning of the year what everything looks like um, I'm gonna quickly start back here because you can probably see a little bit already I did put some spring plants in containers there um, I can get closer for you guys you will see all these plants here are hardening off I'm hoping to get a lot of the ones right here into the potager in the orchard um, this weekend. So we'll see those onions there really really need to go in. They were started in January I think January or February and they, they just desperately need to get in there um, So lots of pretty things lots of food. That's a tray of brassicas over there um, Let me just show you it's the pansies are not looking awesome right now This one's a little sad. It's been it's been, it's an older bloom and I'm really hoping to see some new ones soon But the hellebore is still beautiful. This hellebore has been putting up new shoots since I planted it so uh, if you want to see more of my containers, I'll show you as I, as we go, but I did a video of planting them up. You can kind of see my seed set up back there. It has changed since the March seedling tour, so I may, I may do another tour in there soon. I have a lot of potting up to do. Just moving over here a little bit, um, there's more plants, but there's also that box there that came just before I started filming. I did pull it open because it's plants, and so there's more hellebores here. Um, those are in pots, so they should be okay for at least a few days. Um, and then in here, I actually have some bare root. I can't really tell, but it's Dicentra, which is a uh, bleeding heart. And so I'll show you when we get there where those are going, but that's probably going to have to be a priority this weekend as well because their bare root. So I have several different garden spaces and it's always kind of a de debate for me where to start first. Um, so I'm gonna head to the, the berry garden first because that's where I'm looking. You can see my shadow, hi. Uh, the berry garden is, um, it, the front of it has these this blackberry fence that I made. I was inspired um, by Lovely Greens years ago did this. And uh, she's obviously in a much warmer zone than I am on the Isle of Man and I'm here in Vermont. And um, the, the blackberry bushes have stayed alive, but the canes have not, which is really a bummer because they uh, they they fruit on second year canes, and so I'm I'm gonna try again this year to see. I haven't been doing anything to protect them, when I really should. So I'm gonna see what I can figure out. Um, but you can see here, um, these should have leafed out by now, and they're not. You can actually see at the bottom. on live canes that's what should be happening and back here there's a good one all over the plant uh, all over the the new canes um and this is an older cane from last year uh from i guess the year before um, that i didn't take out last fall um so yeah if you have any advice on that if you've dealt with this before let me know i may have to end up putting in some hardier varieties if i can find them yeah just not sure just not sure but let's let's move on to happier things in that same spring container video i mentioned before i did plant these up and i actually got two pots of potted up tulips from a nursery and separated them and so i wasn't sure how this was going to work but um there's actually tiny buds let me see i can find there's more on the other side but of course i'm over here 
There we go. You can see one. So I'm I'm excited about that. I think that means that they're happy. They're good. Um, these are queen of the night tulips coming up around the bottom. Um, I put some in the potager in my raised bed where I'm growing cut flowers, and I set some aside to go here. I'm I'm excited to see them. They're they're beautiful flowers. So moving on in. Uh, trying not to show too much of my shadow, but unfortunately that's just the time of day it is. Um, these are blueberries here. These are my blueberry beds. So there are 16 blueberries. There's four rows of four, four, four groupings of four, if you will. And um, a lot of my older ones are leafing out right now. Hopefully it's focusing a little bit on that one there. So a lot of those are looking great. I'm pretty happy with the majority of them. Again, this, this bed needs to be weeded. I, just, I didn't even mention that about the blackberry bed. Obviously that needs some attention too. And that is true of everything in here. The berry sections got a little neglected last year um, as I was focusing on the rose circle that we're coming up to. Um, so yeah, they need a lot of work this week, this, uh, this spring and summer. Um, and these are also, these are the, the latest I planted, but they're just looking so sad. And so we'll see, hopefully this year they grow a little bit more, do a little bit better. I'm going to try to make sure I'm better at weeding around them. They get really bad weeds around them and, uh, the grass, it's the grass. It's <laughs> really bad. So I'm going to be working on that, the, trying to baby this row in particular this summer. Since I'm facing here, I've got two rows of raspberries over there. Those are my fall bearing raspberries. There's yellow in the front and then red in the back there and I need to address my uh my trellising system um yeah <laughs> that's a whole nother story I don't I'll, I'll come back to that at a later date all right this is my rose circle I have a video last year of putting the roses in um I dug out the beds last year we put landscape fabric in the middle with the pea gravel I love this spot I just recently put a little bit more pea gravel down um where there were some you know some wash away from winter time um, these are bricks that are going to go along the outside edge as well. We didn't get to that last year. Um, I have a whole pallet of bricks if I slowly scan you over over there on the basketball court. Um, I should be able to edge these beds here and then more of the berry beds as well with bricks. I got to figure out my priorities with that. Um, but in this bed, you'll see I have the arbors and I have roses. There's climbing roses and they are just starting to wake up. Um, Let's try it. They're very pokey. So I'm trying to show you there's there are there are tiny buds down here Some of these canes are good. Some are not like you could see over here. This one's more brown um, I was waiting uh, probably in the next week or two probably next two or three weeks. Honestly, I'm gonna come in and uh, I, I will um, clean them up clean all the leaves and such off and give them a good cut um, The canes on this one since it's a climber though. I would like to keep tall canes if I can um, but obviously if they're dead or not healthy, then I, I won't keep those ones and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I do have some boxwoods in here. They did pretty well. There's a little bit of winter tip damage, but um, I sh I'm going to give it, I'm not going to make it like a, I'm not going to give it a harsh year and make it into a full ball at this point this year, but I'll just uh, get those winter tips taken off and just kind of clean it up a little bit when I come in and clean up. That was Gara that used to be cleaned up. Here is another rose. And I can go through this summer, I'll go through the types of roses. This all needs to be cleaned up. This was Verbena bonariensis. Uh, this, I think a false cypress, I'm not 100% sure. A gold, it's supposed to be that color gold. Well, it's a little bit bronzed right now. I don't know how it's doing in here. Maybe I think it might need some watering. So um, I'm gonna be coming out probably tomorrow morning early and doing that. Um, so I'm trying to do this tour right now get past my shadow here. I actually underplanted a lot of this with uh, strawberries. As it is a berry garden, I thought that, that was appropriate and um, they're beautiful. Some of them did, I, I did have to pull out some from the middle here. Um, so we'll see what we get for a crop and I'll probably plant more in some of the, you know, sparser zones like over there you can see on the other side of that arbor. It seems like all the roses are alive, at least at the base. Uh, so that's good news. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'll obviously have, you'll have to come back and see when they're all in bloom and beautiful. This one, you can see the buds just like down on that one there. <laughs> so again, we'll give, the, we'll give them a little bit more time here. Just kind of trying to give you a full look 
at what's going on here. Um, the bricks there are actually in that pattern because my three-year-old loves to build and uh, she was playing with it so she had made like a square and different anyway it was really really cute so I just left them for right now. I just want to show you these raspberry beds over here there's two more the one that you see in front is a purple royalty and the one behind that is another red and it's either heritage or Killarney and I I keep meaning to make labels I have it written down somewhere which is which so at some point I will make labels for them and I will know and be able to tell you for sure. But these are both my uh, summer bearing varieties, so they will bear on the uh, canes from last year. All right, so let's just pop back this way for a minute. We're gonna go through this arbor. I need. I really need to, um, this rose keeps getting me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be careful. Ah, it's very pokey. Okay. So um, yes, there's a lot of, there's a pretty view and a lot of land back here. Um, uh, a portion of this is ours, I think about halfway back the ridge, um, and this all gets hayed. I am going to try to push back, I keep pushing back a little bit into where he hays uh, <laughs> at a time. Um, where those stakes are is where I'm thinking of putting trees. I was just kind of playing with it, I'm not actually sure. So anyway, I'm hoping to put trees back here. I don't know if that's going to be this year or not, but let me show you this. I just planted these service berries, I'm very excited about them. Um, I just posted a video, it went up this morning as I'm, I'm filming this on Thursday. And the daffodils at the bottom are starting to bloom and I love these daffodils. Let me see if I can get a good view of these ones here. They're not quite open yet, but they're like the delicious, like fluffy, fluffy variety. Um, it's a pink mix. I think I got this specific pink mix from Fedco. I love that one so much. So pretty. So I'm imagining, I'm not sure how close the service berry is to blooming, but I'm imagining if the service berry blooms while we got some daffodils in bloom, it will be an even more spectacular show than otherwise. All right, the, in the rest of these beds, amongst the grass, there are honey berries. Um, I'm gonna show you the ones on the other side because I have a really, I have a really big one on this side. So about half of my honey berries, or maybe a little, a little less than half, are the Aurora variety because they're really good at, um, pollinating other varieties. Uh, so I have, it kind of alternates with those. Um, and then I have other other varieties in here and most of them still have their tags and I think I have it written down somewhere. Um, but let me show you this one because it is, it is, it is showing off right now. Okay, I will try to look up what variety this is later and put it on the screen. But look, it is actually, first of all, it's the biggest one. It looks very happy and it is flowering. Can you see those dainty little flowers? So this is a honeyberry or has cap. It is related to honeysuckle and it gets like elongated blue fruits. Um, so uh, I actually didn't get any last year. <laughs> I think I was competing with the birds and the birds won. And so I might just choose like this one. And if I have like one or two others that seem to be doing really well, I might just like cover like two or three with bird netting this year so that I can get those berries and leave the rest of them to the birds. I have, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six plants on this side. I had, I think, five on the other side, but one got mowed accidentally, so I think there's four over there, but that's at least 10 plants. So I have plenty, hopefully, to share with me and the birds. And they should hopefully all continue to grow and get bigger. I wanna plant more trees around here because they actually, during the summer, they kind of, the leaves have kind of been scorching and I think they would do better in some shade. So especially putting some deciduous trees around here so that they get this full sun in the spring, but then during the heat of the summer, just have a little more shade I think would be beneficial. Okay. I do have some birch trees coming soon that are gonna go back in this area back here. Uh, that's what some of those sticks are for, although I haven't 100% decided on the uh, positioning. We'll, we'll worry about that more a little bit later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back here. I've got some more to show you back here. Um, and then, so this is, uh, this is the orchard area where, let me just pan you over for a minute here. We're right next to the basketball court. There's the front of the house there to give you an idea. I have a place set here for my kids. Uh, it was one of the best investments we made. I was not sure how much they were going to use it, but my 10 year old is actually out here every single day that the weather is not horrible. I mean, even in the winter, she comes out, she puts her coat and boots on and she just swings. Now, unfortunately, one of the swings is broken right now. You may have noticed that, but we've got a new one coming already and we're, we're going we're gonna to fix that. Um, but I did, I did put random uh, bulbs around here. So let me show you what I got so far coming up. 
Okay, so starting here, this is like a little drainage pipe that I'm walking over where the pipe is. I just put some daffodils and hyacinths, so they're just starting to bloom. I noticed them for the first time today. It's like a cute little pop of color. I did, I don't know if you could see it from here, there's some daffodils uh, under the play set, like under the swing, and then at the like base of the, um, where the, near where the baby swing is, but where the uh, wood parts hit the ground. I put some around the base. I don't think I placed them exactly well, but we've managed to avoid stepping on them so far. And then I've got a little log area up there. I haven't seen any blooms yet, but I think there's some pop, some random things that I don't even know which bulbs they are popping up over there. We've got a hanger pad there that I still haven't cleaned up. I say every, every year I might get to it. And honestly, I don't think it's even on my list for this year. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I got so much on the list. Okay, let's come here. Uh, this is another, this was in another video that my husband and I planted these. These are little apricot trees and they are budding up. So that's excited. So these have been in for a couple weeks now, I think. Yeah. So they budded up, so they must be happy. I'm happy with that. After we put them in, we actually had some nights in the 20s, which they're fine because they have to be hardy to our zone. So obviously plus 20 degree Fahrenheit shouldn't overall bother them, but I just, I just want them to be happy. So, <laughs> um, yes, let me show you the buds on this one as well. Beautiful. I'm going to back up here to show you this. Okay. So I had a vision for this area at one point that was, I, I don't know if you can see kind of the outline of two beds that used to be there. <laughs> There's a lot of grass in them right now. And I just, I like, this is another area I neglected last year. And uh, I kind of have to figure out what I want to do because I, my plan was to put a bridge right there and um, have them come into the elders. And I think I'm actually going to put a bridge farther this way so it won't be in the same spot. Um, this bit, so I, I'm still thinking I don't want to move the elders right now. So, I mean, maybe in the future I will, but for right now, they're, they're fine where they are. Um, this bed here, I think I'm going to make a triangle around like where the, the apricot tree is and the, the other bed is and kind of clean it out and really focus on that bed a little bit more this year. Um, there are a few things over here that I'll show you. So this is a lemon balm. I haven't cleaned up uh, my perennials yet, but you can actually see it coming back. That's lemon balm down there. I love, love, love lemon balm. It's so good. I think it's spreading a little bit. I think that's lemon balm over there as well, which is fine. I'm, I put it here knowing it's in the mint family, so it's going to spread. So I'm, I'm fine with that there. Um, I don't have anything in the pots right now, but my plan was to put maybe mint, different mints in the pots. We'll see. Um, there's more elders. It's a different variety of elders, so they're all leafing out. These ones are just taking a little bit longer. Um, and then I have over here coming back, this is some bergamot that I transplanted last year. I think it's the kind with the purple flowers. So um, I'm thinking of moving that over to the other side where I just showed you I was going to make kind of the triangle bed, but I'm still thinking about it. If, I, if I'm going to do it, I should probably do it soon, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I also, I have a rose over here that's being tenacious. It's um, the native type of rose um, and it's kind of suckered out a little bit and everything. Uh, yeah, so we haven't gotten a lot of flowers from it in the past. I planted two of them bare root here a couple years ago and then I thought they were dead. Um, but this one just kind of popped up a little bit last year. So we'll see what happens with it this year. I'm not going to mess with it, I don't think, right now. And then I've got some rhubarb that I planted towards the end of last year when you couldn't even like see the stalks anymore. And it's coming back very nicely. So there we go. Because I, I felt like every orchard needed a little bit of rhubarb. So um, there's our pond over there looking splendid with the willows and the sun coming through. I just love that. We haven't really set up the solar can, like the cushions and everything under the solar canopy yet. We'll see, maybe this weekend that will be something we do. I'm gonna walk you over in this direction then we'll come back to the orchard and then we'll finish up with the potager, I think. <gasps> There's some geese on the pond, hang on. Can you guys see them? Ah, oh, I love that. We do have a we do have a path around the pond, but in the interest of both time and not wanting to disturb the geese, I am going to not go around it right now. But we do mow a path around it. Um, you, can, you might be able to see it there, and uh, yeah, ah, oh, so majestic. Okay, so this is an area 
I'm, I'm now whispering because of the geese. <laughs> this is an area here. I'm walking next to the solar canopies right behind me. We do have seating under there. Um, I'm walking towards where we have our fire pit. This is a whole area here that I'm kind of just dreaming about right now. What I can do, I would like it to make it more of an entertaining area. Do like a pad, like, I don't know if patio is the right word, but like flagstones around the fire pit so that we can have our chairs on there without having to move them to mow. <laughs> um, and I'd also like to do more plantings around it. Like I think kind of in my dream version right now, it's just like a series of like stone paths and uh, like kind of patio-ish areas for seating and and different things and just surrounded by beds of plants. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm not making you dizzy as I turn here. But to start this year, I did plant a forest pansy red bud. <laughs> this is the forest pansy red bud I planted. I don't think I did a video when I did this. Um, it came, it actually had a couple pink buds on it because it came from one of the southern states and so it was breaking out of dormancy so I was a little worried for it but it has survived our temperatures okay um, and it has these really pretty I'm gonna move my hand out of the way there we go it has these really pretty um, dark leaves that are heart shaped there we go um, I'm I'm so excited about it. I, I will see if I can put a picture of a mature one in here um, again it this has been in for a couple weeks um, yeah so I'm not worried about it at this point. It is leafing out, so it is alive. It's probably going to look a little sad this year, um, but hopefully we'll, we'll see some growth on it. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure how long to leave the stake on, so I need to do some research on that. If you have any thoughts, let me know. We are in a somewhat windy area, so I didn't want to. I, I obviously didn't want to take it off immediately, but I also don't want to leave it on too long because I don't. I don't want to make it weak. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, let me know if you have thoughts on that. And uh, you can see I might, I, so that tree gets about, I think a maximum of 25 or 30 feet um, wide. So I did measure to make sure we were far enough from the solar canopy, um, but I think I, do, I may have to adjust where the fire pit is right now. Right now it's just like on stones with stones around it that the, the pit thing itself. And so, or the fire bowl, I guess. So I can still move it. I haven't dug down yet, although I do want to do that at some point. So I might adjust it a little bit just to make sure it's far enough away from what the mature size of the tree will be. You're seeing my compost bin over there. I, I'm not going to get closer right now. It's falling apart. It actually fell apart a little bit in the fall. I think a creature tried to climb into it and like pulled part of it apart. So that's on my list to fix, but we haven't done it yet, so we're not going to worry about that. That's my kid's mud kitchen over there. We're going to come back around to the orchard because I do want to show you this. So uh, this is a hydrangea. This is, I think, a vanilla strawberry is what it's called. Um, and there's daffodils around it. So I'm really excited because I planted daffodils around it last year and they did not come up. I don't know what happened, but this year they are. So, um, and these were, I, I replanted. So, I mean, it's possible that some from the year before are coming up too. Something happened. I don't know, but I'm going to guess these are the ones from last year. It's got tiny buds on it. I haven't trimmed it yet, um, but it is alive. I don't know if you can see the, the yeah, I, I don't know if it will focus on the tiny buds, but they're, they're there. They're very tiny. I do need to come in and prune. I have other hydrangeas that I didn't show you yet, but I'll show you those around the house um, that are, are also budding up, but are doing much better. Um, here is one orchard bed. So over the years, since we made the, the, when, since we originally made the beds, the grass has been encroaching in. Like I haven't, I did not edge out a clean line and as they mow, they go farther and farther in. And so it's becoming a problem with some of the plants, um, to be honest. And so I'm thinking of doing stone. You'll notice there's just some stone on the edge there. Um, I do still have a little bit more on the, um, it's, I, I dug I dug these stones out from my front walkway last year. Um, there were like tiny little stone walls in there. And so I'm using what I've got. I've got a little bit more left, but I think I'm going to have to get my hands on some more stones. So um, that's just saying that. Right, let's come closer over here. This is a peach. Um, I don't remember. I think this is a contender peach. Not 100% sure. I have two different varieties. Um, this is the younger one. This one in... I think year before last, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then it also has some daffodils coming up around it. And just like last year, the ones here, I think it was the same variety didn't come up. Oh no, that some of them came up last year here. Um, I actually had the stones in farther. You can kind of see where they were. And this morning I realized that they were like on top of daffodils. And so 
I moved them. There were like daff that daffodil was trying to come up through the cracks. So hopefully these daffodils are okay. Um, I apparently forgot where the edge of the bed originally was. So that's that. There's actually some alliums coming up there in the middle. And then here you'll see I put a bunch of tulips in here last fall. I am so excited to see them up. I kind of just did like the toss and plant method to kind of make it random. But um, so they go, they're not actually in the whole bed. They're on like this side of the bed here. And then they stop shortly after this apple tree here. Um, and this one's uh, budding up here as well. Or yeah, there we go. The buds are starting to break, I guess, is how I would describe that. Um, there's, an, there's another one over there that's more leafed out, um, and it's also got daffodils at the bottom. Um, so the daffodils are more reliable for us. I think that might be true for everybody, I'm not sure. Um, but daffodils come back pretty well and will naturalize for us. So I planted these several years ago and they just keep coming back. And then the tulips, I planted this last year and I'm not sure if they'll come back or not. So we'll just see. This is uh, my pollinator patch. It's a mess. <laughs> I, this is another area I didn't really work on much last year, um, but I will come through and cut stuff back. I know I have some plants coming back. I've just seen some of the things at the bases. There's some bergamot in here. Um, I think that's what all this patch is there. Um, I saw, I think that's a, an anise hyssop, um, which is an agastache. I, I always say agastache, but I've learned that it's, I think it's supposed to be pronounced agastache. Um, there's a yarrow coming back. This one here is Rudbeckia that I, th I think is coming back. Um, I, but I'm gonna wait a little bit before cleaning all this up. Ideally, you wait until temperatures are staying above 50, or it might be 55, uh, to clean up perennials and such um, for pollinator's sake. They like to they like to hide in the debris, basically. Um, I, it takes us so long for the nights to be at 55. I almost never wait that long. So, but I, I will wait longer um, in areas like this, especially in my potager, my kitchen garden. I do clean it up earlier. I clean some of it up in the fall, and then I will clean some of it up earlier in the spring because I put a lot of spring crops in there, and I want it to be cleaned up and stuff. So, you know, it's kind of it's striking a balance. But in areas out here and such, I I really feel like it's just good to. Let the pollinators have a little bit more time. I'm gonna. We're over here now at uh, at the other side here, the bed, closer to the basketball court. This is another. Oh, I should have mentioned that other one is a uh, Liberty apple, a semi dwarf. This one is a Duchess of Goldenberg apple. Um, this one has. It's always leafed out nicely, and it is again. It has not fruited for me yet. The other two have. So we'll see. We'll see. This is. Um, these were planted in. 2019 spring of 2019 yeah, as as like baby trees so we'll see i've also got daffodils coming up under there and some burdock i need to remove that's what that those little balls are um this was my son's container last year and it was so cute he had um prince tut and stuff so i just left the containers i probably shouldn't have with the terracotta but so far they seem fine um there's comfrey coming up there i didn't remove that debris a little bit i think because it was kind of strangling the new growth um this is a current uh, black currant, it's leafing out beautifully. Um, I made some currant jam with it last year, and I think it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite jam that I made. Um, that's another. Let's see. At some point, I had lemon balm and I had sage in here. So let me let me investigate farther. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's lemon balm down there. I don't know if we'll see the sage popping up somewhere else at some point, or if that one's gone. Um, but I do want to stick more perennials in here but I also have annuals uh, annual flowers that I can stick in here as well um yeah to fill in I want to fill it in more that okay there's the seed heads there or the <laughs> the plant sticks there uh, are a echinacea that was absolutely gorgeous that I planted last year so I'm not sure if I'm seeing signs of growth yet um I'm really hoping I do because I it was just so 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 beautiful oh look at that pretty patch of daffodils over there hang on zoomed in for you aren't those so pretty i love them so much okay back to the wide view this is uh, another apple and this is a uh, zest star apple um so these are all summer apples they don't store super well so i do have uh, more apples coming in the mail bare root and i'm actually going to plant them up by the playset. Uh, so you'll see some sticks up there and they're kind of at a distance now i probably should have pointed them out sooner when i was up there but <laughs> 
hopefully, eventually there'll be apple trees in those approximate areas. Okay, continuing on over here, um, I do have some chives coming back up. I planted these a couple years ago as well. Excited to see them there. And my gooseberries here. Now these got completely defoliated last year um, in the like late spring, early summer. I don't know exactly what happened. This one seems to be leafing back out really nicely this year. It looks great. Um, but this one, <laughs> not so much. I see like one branch of leaves over there. Um, I'm gonna give it a little time, but I'm, I'm, I might have to replace this one. So that might be what happens over here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, and this is a pear tree that was here when we moved in and uh, I started pruning it and I think it could probably use a little bit more. I just got what I could reach without the ladder. It might have to be what it is this year. Um, although I would like to get more of those suckers on the top. So those water, those water spouts there. Okay, before we head to the potache, I know some of you might be waiting for that. Um, <laughs> I am going to show you uh, what, what's going on around the house a little bit because that has been a priority for me last year, uh, this front of the house area, and it's continuing to be a priority for me this year as I work my way around. Um, so let me, just, let me just show you a couple things here. So last year I dug out everything, well not everything, the one exception is these rhododendron bushes, but I dug out a lot of the area around this uh, front side of our house. It was just a mess. Um, I didn't fully know what was in there or how to take care of it. And so it was overgrown with grass and I just, I wasn't loving it. So I wanted to make it mine. And so I <laughs> dug out all the grass and I did use landscape fabric because it is such a problem here. And I had debated and like hemmed and hawed over it. And my husband was like, please just do the landscape fabric so that you're not totally stressed about it constantly. And I think in this area, at least that was a good decision thus far. <laughs> so um, I put hydrangeas. So I'll show you what I did. I have bricks lining it. And then I have hydrangeas in. Um, these ones, the one on the left, I think is the only hydrangea. I put in nine. And I think that one on the left is the only one that didn't survive the winter. Um, but they're leafing out so beautifully. Look at that. So pretty. So these ones here are incredible blush. I'm going to order another one and replace that one. Um, and I'm, I've lined it with brick. I just did it myself. So it's, you know, an amateur job and definitely not perfect, but it's a look. It's a look. I'm proud of myself. It's better than it was before. So I will tell you, I have boxwoods that will be coming and are going to be lining, not where the rhododendrons are. Those were here when we moved in. I think they're the, I think the only, I think they might be the only things that I left in the front of the house beds. But in front of the, here, there's going to be boxwoods. And I got, um, I believe, the North Star variety that stays smaller. I will, I, I plan on doing a video when I plant them. But I'm going to do a little boxwood hedge in the front. And I'm planning on keeping it pretty short. These Incrediballs are supposed to get up to like five feet tall. So my, my hope is that it will be boxwoods in the front with, um, you know, the hydrangeas kind of spilling over the top. I also, in this specific spot, I got some of the bleeding hearts that you saw earlier um, that just came in the mail are going to kind of go throughout, um, kind of around where the hydrangeas are because this is what the hydrangeas look like in the spring. For a while, they are just sticks with leaves on them. It takes them a while to fill out and they don't really start blooming until the summer. And so I thought it'd be really nice to have that spring interest of the beautiful spring color and then bleeding hearts tend to die out in the summer they just get tired and eventually die back so um i'm gonna try that i think that could be a really fun blend um yeah so oh excited i'm moving around this way i did plant this arborvitae i i think it's a oh i'll have to look up the variety it did get a little bit of winter damage here it looks like and i'll, I'll probably just trim that off but for the most part it looks pretty good um it's starting to lose its bronze color from winter um and i'm gonna be putting more boxwoods up in front here and uh, other things as well. Um, I don't have anything at this point to put like in between the hydrangeas in these areas like I do over there. That was just um, an idea <laughs> that just came to me that I decided to go forward with. Um, but in the future, I am hoping to have more stuff in this area. I'm thinking maybe of interspersing like white daffodils and then alliums, which get the big purple heads. Um, so that those will kind of be the show. Um, during the spring until the hydrangeas can put on their own show. And then I do have other spots that I haven't filled in yet that'll maybe be filled in with something. But these are all coming back beautifully. These are the Incrediball, not blush, just plain Incrediball. So they come out like a white and then they fade to green. So um, I'm uh, I'm so happy that they're all alive, really. And uh, I do need to come 
prune them. I haven't done that yet, but um, we've again had some cold nights, so I just wanted to wait. I think we're past the worst of it, so I'll be doing that soon. All right, we're back to kind of where we started, but I did want to show you this. All right, my kids are coming outside with their, their father, I think, so you might hear them. Um, these are my tater tot arborvitaes. I will be planting... I will be planting flowering annuals in them at least this year, probably for a couple of years until um, I eventually I'll probably put a perennial in um, that flowers, but we'll just see. Um, we've got and we've got more um, hydrangeas over there. And then this bed I is is very much just starting. <laughs> um, I, ha I put in this Ruby Tears crab apple last weekend. I love it. I'm very excited about it. It is seeming to be leaning a little bit more, so I'm going to have to see if I can adjust that. Um, I might have just gotten a little rocked. We do have some wind. It's not too bad though. Um, I have a lot of debris to clean up. I cleared like a lot. I cleared a lot of loose strife roots and things from right around the tree before I planted it. Um, but there's a lot more cleaning up to do. I do have some irises that I really like coming up here, so I'm trying to be aware of those. I don't want to pull those out. <laughs> so, um, or if I do, I want to do it carefully and replant them. So I do, we do have some stumps, stumps to pull out and stuff. And there's a dwarf Alberta spruce there. Um, this bed I'm hoping to put, oh, I have so many ideas of different plants that I want. <laughs> uh, peonies. Um, what else? I don't know. I have so many ideas in my head. I'm not sure exactly what will end up in here. I am, I'm thinking definitely some peonies for some fun spring. And then, um, I like probably a coral berry, um, maybe I might put a nine bark in here. I, I just have so many. Ideas. So it's good. It's going to be, you know, shrubs, small shrubs and perennials for the most part is my thought in this bed here around, around this. We do have, um, a spigot back there. And so I'm going to, we have to take that stump out still, but then I'm planning on putting like a little path. That's why those stones, those stones were actually, <laughs> there's a path like through here. So I took them out cause they were near the tree and I threw them over here because, um, I, I want to have like a little path back to where the spigot is and I might put a hose, um, like a, well, we have a, we have a drip, we have a drip line system for the hydrangeas in the front of the house there. Cause I know hydrangeas like tons of water and I wanted to keep them alive. Um, but I'm hoping to also have a hose back here that I can use to water stuff in and such. Um, I'm hoping to also try to clean up the foundation a little bit. I have some stuff to do that with, but I don't know how it's going to go. Um, apparently my child put a sticker on the siding so I'm gonna have to get that off somehow I have a trellis I haven't put it up yet because again I wanted to clean up the foundation and probably actually clean the siding a bit and then we're gonna put a trellis on here and I have a rose and a clematis coming to put on it so I'm really excited about that uh, yes it's gonna be gorgeous 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 um, as we keep going this is a lilac that was here when we moved in it's quite big I've had to cut good chunks of it out because it's been it was rubbing the roof, which is obviously no good. Um, I got a I got a reciprocating saw for myself this year, so I should be able to better cut like and clean up down there. So after it blooms this year, I may do a pretty major prune on it. We're gonna see how it goes. It is pretty close to the house, so I don't know. Um, there's a lot of suckers in there, and this is just a mess of things. I'm kind of trying to let some of it bloom, but then it is gonna need to be cleaned out when I put new stuff in. So. We'll just see how it goes. I also am thinking I'm going to expand this bed out by probably a couple feet. Um, cause it, it feels, it feels more narrow than necessary to me. And I would like more planting space. Okay. Oh, the sun's right there, but this is a maple tree. Let me see if I can get a, a view for you because I, um, Oh, before I get there, before I get there. Okay. Since we're on the lilac tree, I just wanted to show you, um, there's a little hyacinth there that my daughter planted. This is an area she likes to sit in my 10 year old where she set up. My, um, I transplanted this hookah last year and it's so pretty. I don't actually remember which variety this is, but I'm really glad they're coming back. I'm very excited about that. I love hookah. It's one of my favorite plants. And then I saw some other things coming back. There's a bleeding hearts back there. Um, those are a chartreuse variety. So the, um, leaves are more bright green chartreuse color and they still bloom pink. And then I had a bunch of brunner in here. I'm only seeing one right now. Hopefully more come back, but at least we've got that one. It, it gets pretty blue flowers. So, oh, I think, I think there's like tips of another one there. I don't know if you could see that or not. It might just look like part of the, the dirt, uh, part of the soil, but I tried to clean this up and I did transplant some hostas in here last, uh, late summer, fall. I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm, I'm not going to get to this bed anytime soon though. So they have some time if they want to appear, if not. I am going to remake this bed. This is like a really narrow corner right there where that shrub is. I think that's a spirea. 
I cut it back pretty hard one year uh, last year and so I kind of forewent any blooms last year um, but I don't know I think I'm I don't love it I don't love it and I think it's gonna come out and I'm gonna rework this whole area um, while though I'm standing right next to the maple tree here I did want to show you because it's look at these buds and blossoms so pretty like all of the maple trees right now have these have this bright green color so when you drive along like the edge of the mountains and stuff you can see just like this it's like the darker green evergreen and then this like bright pop of green throughout in the area and it's just it's just beautiful it's just beautiful um you're getting a glimpse of my potage but again i'm gonna tease you i know you're gonna want to see the potage i gotta tell you there's not a lot happening in it yet um next few days i'm hoping to get a lot more work done in there but uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to wait to give you a tour. So um, let me let me show you here. I am standing on the other side of my house, facing the potager, and I am going to deal with these beds this year. <laughs> Currently, there's really not much here. There were, I think, they're cup cup flowers. Actually, I thought they were sunflowers when we first moved in, but they grow for most of the year and then they bloom at the very very end of the season in like October for a little bit and there are these really pretty um, yellow flowers but I would like more than that in this bed so um, I had my daughter cut them all down all the stalks were up <laughs> for the winter um, so she cut them down for me and we're gonna dig out this bed you can see there's like a white whitish rock there um, that's like reflecting <laughs> out of the grass and I want the bed to actually go out to there and then curve around here um, so I think that'll be a better line and I'll be able to put some fun things in there. Um, we are going to get the deck redone one day, but I, I have no idea when. So I'm just moving forward with planting things because <laughs> um, it, it would make me happier. I did clear out this. My family helped me. It was all, it was so many brambles. So there were raspberries and blackberries in here, which obviously I love raspberries and blackberries. I have them on the other side, but this was just a bad location. We couldn't get in. So weedy. So I did... Uh, kind of dig out the um, outline of I, I don't know if I love it I might have to adjust it a little bit um, but this is going to be another bed where I plant pretty things and so far we have a crab apple in here this is a coral burst crab apple and it was already it was in bloom when it came so I was a little nervous about it so I did I did wait until after those 20 degree nights to plant it out <laughs> it's got these crab apples actually forming which is nice um, this side was not leafed out at all when it came, so it's still a lot less, but actually might get another bloom there. That's cool. Um, but it does look like it has more leaves, leaves than it did before, so that will be good. I also have lots of ideas for this bed that I'm debating. Um, I've been kind of going back and forth with ideas like making sketches all winter long, and so at some point I'm going to have to make some decisions. So I actually had ordered this crab apple to go where the Ruby Tears Weeping one is. I, I, at first I was, I wanted a weeping one and I had seen Ruby Tears last year and I thought about getting it. I actually didn't know how to get it in my car, get it home when I saw it. So I didn't, and I was thinking about it all year. And then over the winter, as I was designing the bed, I was like, oh, but maybe I don't want a weeping one there. So when it came down to it and I ordered crab apple tree online, I, first of all, I couldn't find any of the weeping ones available online. They just weren't available. And I wanted a crab apple and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with this one. This one's, and it is, it's beautiful. I mean, this one's a little... A little wonky I think it needs a little love and a little time but it'll get there um, it actually does stay kind of like a more ball shape as it is um, but then this one came and I was like you know what that's really a lot more like contained and less whimsical than I want for that space and so um, a local nursery had I kind of I peruse like when they have catalogs online and stuff I noticed they had the Ruby Tears on their catalog list and so I went last weekend they had they're still having a spring tree sale and so that's when I picked up that and the service berries that I've wanted for a while and I, I they deliver so I went and I, I asked you know how do I how do I order this for delivery and he's like I can get it in your minivan so I <laughs> he wrapped it up for me really nice uh, all all three of those trees and I stuck some hellebores in the front seat and I got it all home so it was a fun fun adventure all right i'm just going to point out from here a couple things i have uh pansies that i grew from seed that i do have in the deck boxes up there they're not there's one blooming when i planted that you could check that out in the spring containers video but um they're they're not really blooming yet but they, it does it looks so much better to me to just have that green there than um to have them just like kind of empty so it still makes me happy. And then I'm gonna point out, um, that's our breezeway over there between our garage and our house. Um, 
over here. There's a sassafras tree which with, the, with a bunch of suckers and I think some periwinkle and a stone wall is falling apart. Once I get through these beds, I'm hoping to get to that one. I have actually more solid ideas for the most part of specific plants I want over there. Um, I kind of want to do like a deep color romantic cottage feel. So like um, things like a, a, a dark, I don't know if they're called purple smoke bushes, like the dark colored smoke bush, um, maybe a Japanese maple. I am debating between what like tree form I want, if I want an evergreen or Japanese maple, but I have lists of perennials and shrubs that I <laughs> I want over there but those both beds will be expanded um it's just kind of silly that they're so close to the house right now when i could have more planting space so i'm just going to point it out from here all right let's swing around this way and this is my protege the snakes are out and they're scaring me it's just garter snakes for the most part but um at least all the ones i've seen my kids saw a milk snake which is not venomous but it's a mimic it's scared my daughter which i don't blame her i probably would have been more scared um so okay there's not a lot going on here right now so hopefully we can make this a fast tour i am hoping to get landscape fabric and gravel down in the paths this year and i will be putting like more um garden soil and compost on beds like on, i'm going to be moving landscape fabric like actually putting down compost soil and stuff and i'm moving some of the landscape fabric around with the different holes so a lot needs to be done in here but um let me just show you what's happening. I'm going to start over here. This is the northern side. We've got garlic coming up. So let me show you that because that's exciting. Okay. Yes. All right. So garlic. I planted this in the fall and it's coming up nicely. So I'm happy with that. Oh, that's a thistle there. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have a huge problem with thistle because I let it go. So I'm going to need to get that one, but I don't have my gloves on me and I don't really want to poke my fingers. So um this is like a little patch of bachelor's buttons this is where i had them last year and they receded and they're coming back so uh, when i was cleaning the bed out i cleaned this bed out mostly in the fall well not completely but i cleaned out the section for the garlic i saw these here and i left them i think there's some bare patches in the middle so i might fill it in with some more seeds we'll see um, I just recently cleaned this up. This had scabiosa in it last year um, and it didn't seem to reseed. I am going to put carrots and maybe some maybe maybe some rutabaga in this area. This year I did move some of the violets had died back along the edge but then had come back kind of in the middle here. So I just transplanted them. It looks like this one is gonna bloom. Yay! So it was a mix of different violets and I don't even remember what kinds. Okay. Uh, I did the same thing on the edge over here. I, I moved the violets. I started cleaning this up. That's a sweet William. I think that variety might be a biennial, so I'm trying to leave those ones as well. This bed is going to be onions and shallots and leeks. Um, so I did come in the other day and kind of clean it out. I, I missed that patch there around the sweet William, and now I'm seeing more grass coming up even just since I did that. So I'll have to try to stay on it. Um, over here, I did plant some scabiosa and that was in the planting hardy annuals video i'm actually gonna pop around here because daffodils this is a different variety than i showed you last time it's just got like the pink cup there ah and i love it love it love it they just make me happy i think these this pink pink daffodil mix that i put in is just so romantic okay coming back in coming back in still don't have the gates up still need to reinforce those it's a work in progress <laughs> um straw flower is here amongst the hay big pile of hay that was on top fun fact about this this bed right here so i was out i wasn't filming it but i was out the other day just trying to clean up this bed in preparation for the onions and such and um last year i had left carrots in here and i had covered them with a bunch of hay because i wanted to see if i could keep harvesting them and um i i didn't in the fall for some reason <laughs> and then by the time i got out and checked on them it had frozen uh, it is a raised bed so it's gonna freeze faster i think than the, the ground would um but i so i couldn't get the carrots out but when i came to clean them out there were still good carrots in there so i just got a bunch i just made some carrot muffins with them they're so good so good so that was exciting this this is all going to be moved this is where i had pumpkins last year there's going to be potatoes this year so the landscape fabric is going to go and i'm hoping to do like a ruth stout method with a lot of hay um okay over here in the corner i did plant some rudbeckia they look okay i don't think they've done much since i planted them but we'll you know give them some time these are my snapdragons i planted i did mention in my hardy annuals video that 
we got some really cold nights and I did cover them, but they didn't, a lot of them didn't look good. They are growing back though. Let me show you, even the ones that look like they're not, at the very bottom there, they are regrowing. So um, I probably am gonna come in and replace some of them this weekend, but I mean, most of them have new growth on them. They might just be a bit behind. So that's where we are. Lancy fabric's still out here. I am not actually seeing any dips below freezing in my 10 day forecast. Um, we're still not, we're still not uh, seeing the date of our average less frost right now for us. That's May 8th in the forecast. Sorry, I got really excited by a bird. <laughs> it's totally normal for me. Right, so uh, May 8th is our average less frost uh, starting this year. Last year is May 12th, so it's changed. Uh, the average has changed for us. Um, to a little bit earlier, um, but I don't I don't see anything in the forecast So I'm not I'm not going ahead and planting tender things out right now for sure um, But I'm just I'm just keeping my eye on it But I'm again. I'm not it means that I'm not really worried about the plants that I do have out and I will be putting more out this weekend ones that are um, Cold hardy so that's my plan. I'm just walking along the edge here, but there's really there's really not much here If I turn you here, this is where my tomatoes were last year and This is gonna be pumpkins this year. So I'm actually going to move as I, I'm gonna move landscape fabric around so I don't have to use more and, and burn more of the holes. So I'll use the ones that had the uh, holes burned at the appropriate lengths and, and like kind of move them around after I put down some more garden soil and compost. So that's that's my plan. I have some red winged blackbirds around here that are there's the male ones I think might come back first and they're but they've been they've been marking their territories or working out the territorial situation out here. Um, but that's that kind of that sound it's not really a screech it's kind of a screech it's not real i don't know um but that's the red winged blackbird sound in case you're wondering <laughs> this is my area of shame this is my asparagus beds i can't even see if there's asparagus coming up oh oh there is ha -ha! what a fun discovery we just made exciting i am going to if i see them i'm gonna let this one get a little bit bigger i am going to harvest them this year and I'm also hoping this weekend to clean these out. Okay, let me show you pretty things. I have a hyacinth here. This bed, this is fun. So this is where I had my cutting flower and my cutting bulbs last year. I had tulips and these hyacinths and some alliums in the back. And I was mostly pulling them up as I went, at least I thought, oh, some of these are buried under the hay. I need to uncover stuff. Oh, uh -huh. we'll, we'll come, we'll get, <laughs> okay. Um, I thought I was pulling them up, but apparently I did not pull them all up and I did not fully clean it out because look at this, this is so gorgeous. I'm gonna have bonus, bonus tulips this year. Um, on a not as exciting note, I don't see any ranunculus and anemones yet, so am I a bit worried? Yes, but I think they might've taken a long time last year too. So I, I don't have any plans for this bed for the near future, so they can take a little time and I will, I will wait. Um, let me quickly just, I have more going on here than I thought it is taking longer. Um, I got some comfrey coming up in this herb bed and you, there's um, some more agastache, some anise hips up there, as well as some hyssop officinalis. So uh, all this is gonna need to be cut back. I have fever few coming back. I have, I'll try to pan you not too fast. I don't know if you could see it over there. There's some echinacea and that might, I think that was holy basil there. And that's not supposed to be perennial for me, but it looks like it's coming back. So I don't know what's up with that, but it's awesome. In the circle there, there's more lemon balm and ladies mantle and lavender and sage, and it's all looking good in time. So, um, and then there's more herbs over, culinary herbs back there. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to the quince tree and that's pretty diaphanous. Let me, let me just show you here. Um, I did leave some of these sunflowers. I cut down the big sunflowers. I took them down this spring, but I did leave them up during the winter for birds. Okay, so over here, this is where I planted tulips and some daffodils yeah i think it's just daffodils and tulips in here um this past fall there is a lot crammed in here and this is my first one to bloom hello um let me see if i know what let me see if i can see what this is oh it's an apricot whirl daffodil Ooh, it's pretty okay let's show it again okay it's an apricot whirl daffodil. That's really pretty. I really like that. I'm excited to cut those and bring them inside. Um, and then we've got a whole lot of different tulips. So, um, oh, more, more daffodils. There's replete. And then there's single early prince mix, a plum parrot mix, bella pock. Look at this. Is this one variegated leaves? Hopefully that's purposeful. If it is, it's gorgeous. 
So there's just a lot of, um, yeah, it's a Belle Epoque. I have specific Belle Epoque ones. And then I also have a Belle Epoque Romantic Tulip mix, which I think has more different kinds in it. And I have a whole bunch of Queen of the Nights. So I'm excited to see those. And then, yeah, other things will be planted over here. Um, the brassicas will be in the bed up here. Um, I put hay down, which does decrease the weeds quite a bit. We still do have some coming up I'll need to clean out, but that's that. The elder is leafing out and she always is beautiful. Yes, she's my beautiful elder and I love her. Uh, underneath her, you see some comfrey. Um, I did finally clean out this bed for the most part. Um, <laughs> A couple weeks ago it was a mess and I found some strawberries under there I think I'm gonna move them I'm debating if I want to put them like in spots in the rose circle where there's blank spots um, or if I want to put them in a pot I don't know um, there's also some strawberries I purposely planted under the elder I was trying to make a guild under here and some violets oh the thistle there I'm gonna have to take care of um, I'm not seeing any violets blooming back there right now but I definitely see strawberries so that's good Uh, one year, um, there was a red-winged blackbird nest in here, um, which was awesome, except they got mad whenever I came over here. So, you know, good and bad. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I'm running low on battery, and I have a couple more things to show you. So, here we go. So many daffodils under this quince tree. I love this so much. Um, there's also alliums coming up in here. And again, this is the uh, pink daffodil mix. So, I don't know if you can see. I just... Oh. So in love with them. And this is a quince tree and it's leafing out. So that's great. Uh, there's some branches here that I'm not sure are gonna leaf out. So I'll give them another week or two and then I might cut out any parts that still look like they're not coming up. But I love this. And then before we go, this is my edible flower bed. It is a mess. I actually have built the, um, there's like one more step to do on the bench that I'm working on with my eight year old son. Um, so <laughs> hopefully it'll actually be out here this year. Um, this is a uh, bergamot or bee balm coming back. And then I have violets that are blooming, which is so exciting because I love violets and I have a lot here. I'm stepping on things and I don't know what they are, but they're just so sweet and special to me. My uh, second daughter, her middle name is Violet. I'll be cleaning this up again soon, but not quite yet. <laughs> um, this, this bed is not the top priority here. So behind me here, big bed was corn and sunflowers last year. That's gonna be where I move my tomatoes. I'm just gonna to try to move the whole setup where I had to pull the T-post out and reinstall them over there. Um, and again, I'm gonna put some more good stuff on the soil. I, at first I'm gonna to need to come mow out here, to be honest. I, I got a new mower, new lawn mower. So it's a just a little electric push one. So it's all good. Um, to finish up this video though, I do want to show you the um, daffodils at the end of my driveway. So I probably won't be able to talk down there because it's it's, it's a high traffic road. Um, and so uh, it's gonna be very loud. But let me show you, I planted, I think a hundred daffodils and a hundred tulips on each side, if I'm correct. It's either a it's either hundred total or a hundred on each side. This last year, and I also had some that I planted the year before that are some of them are, com are coming back. And the south side, um, uh, or rather the north side, it's it's on a hill, and so the north side gets hit by the sun, by the warming sun first, and so it actually uh, blooms first. So um, I'll show you that. I'll show you both sides, but that side has quite a lot, and the other side doesn't have as much. But I did plant an equal amount on both sides. But let me show you down there. Aren't those beautiful? I believe those are both 60 day mixes, one of daffodils and one of tulips that I put there. They're either from Longfield Gardens or Eden Brothers because that's where I ordered. I'll try to have it on the screen, I'll look it up. 
I am so excited about them. We can't actually see them from our house because they're down the hill a little ways, but we do see them every time we, you know, leave and come home. And I really want to just be like a happy pop of color for all the people who drive by. So I'm hoping it makes somebody smile as they drive by. And I hope that you have something that makes you smile today. Maybe it's your garden. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this April tour first big tour of the year. Um, again, I'm thinking that I'm going to be doing separate tours of the different areas as the year goes along and there's more to show you. Um, there was more today than I thought there was <laughs> to show you, so that's always exciting. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please, I love to see them, so uh, ask or comment away below. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, go ahead and subscribe and then it will it doesn't always pop up, <laughs> but it'll make it more likely to pop up if you subscribe and then you have me at least saved so you can go check out if I have anything new. Um, I have been doing better at doing more content this year, so um, I'm hoping to keep that up and uh, I'm, hoping you're, I'm hoping you're enjoying it as well. And I know I will enjoy having more to look back on next winter <laughs> when, uh, when I'm wanting my garden, when I'm wanting to see my garden again. The sun is going down and I'm gonna go in for dinner. I hope you are all well until next time. Happy gardening.